We are now going to start working through our example of death first search so we can see how it works in practice. Similar to our previous example, we're going to use white to mean white, and we're going to use blue to mean gray, and red to mean black. So blue nodes will be nodes that have yet to finish, so we're going to start at 1, as we did before. We're also going to keep track of the starting and finishing times. So we're going to do the starting time in blue. So we discover that node. We then find an adjacent node. We're going to always assume we do the one in numerical order. So we would then discover two, which has a discovery time of two. From there, we have two options. We can discover six or eight. We're going to discover six because it's the next in numerical order. From there, we can discover seven, which gives a four. From seven, we have two options, three or four. We're going to choose three because... It is first in numerical order, and then we discovered three, and then from three we'll notice we have nowhere new to go, so we are now done with three, so we're going to write a six there as the finishing time, and then we need to recolor three to say we are now done with it. So we color three as red, and I'm going to comment on something that we haven't been drawing, but it's worthwhile now that we've seen something that occurred here, which is... Somewhere along the way, we are having edges that we're following. We can keep track of those, just as we did with breadth first search. These are our tree edges. However, this edge that we just discovered from 1 to 3 is a special type of edge, because if you notice, it actually identified a cycle in the graph. Going 1, 2, 6, 7, 3, 1. Upon discovering that node, which is currently being processed, I know for a fact that there is now a cycle. I know that because I found a path from one all the way back to one before I finished going anywhere else. So depth first search can help us actually identify cycles. Intuitively, you yourself can identify them by looking at the graph often. However, an algorithmic way of doing it is running depth first search. There are other algorithms as well, but this is a common one that people will use. So once we finish three, what happens? This is a recursive algorithm. So it backtracks along this edge until it gets to seven, and then it will keep proceeding from there if there's anywhere new to go. From seven, I can still go down to four. So we we'll go down to four. Four is now discovered. The time keeps getting updated. So the discovery time there is seven. And then we also used this edge. So let's try to keep track of that as well. And finally, from four, we would notice that one is here. So we discovered another cycle. One, two, three, seven, four, one as another cycle. And there was nowhere else to go from four, so we are now done with four. So we're going to color it red. And write down a finishing time, which we'll do as eight. And then from we go back to seven. There's nowhere new to go from seven, so we are now also done with seven. So that gets a finishing time of nine. We go up to six, and there is somewhere new to go from six. We can go to nine. So we go to nine. From 9, we can go to 12, so we go to 12, let's highlight that. I forgot to write down the discovery time, I apologize. This is going to be 10 for the discovery time. For 12, it's an 11 for the discovery time, there's nowhere to go from 12 at all. So, that is 12, and then we are done with 12, so we recolor it red. And now we keep going from 9 because there's still a new place to go. So we're going to follow that edge down to the right to 13. And color it blue. We now discovered 13. Which will get a 13 for its discovery time. That's our next number. We then from there will go to 10. Which gets a discovery time of 14. And from 10 we'll go to 8. Which gets a discovery time of 15. And I'm going to quickly... Fill in these edges. Now from here we would try to go to two and we identify yet another cycle. Although this one isn't necessarily starting at one. It's going two, six, nine, 13, 10, eight. So there's another cycle we discover in the graph there. And then we will check 11. So we'll go down to 11, which is undiscovered. So that gets a discovery time of 16. From there, we discover 5, which gets a discovery time of 17. And it will then explore from there back to 1. 
And notice we have this giant cycle here, 1, 2, 6, 9, 13, all the way there. So that's another cycle. We are now done with every node, so we're going to finish up all of them sort of backtracking. So we go back here, we go back there, we go back here, we go back there, we go to here. And I'm going to color in these, then comment on what 13 does, just because it's worth mentioning, which is we finished up all these nodes going back to 13. 13 also discovers a cycle here, kind of. It will try to check this node here, and upon doing that, notices another cycle. The cycle it notices there is going to be classified slightly differently. We'll see that as we explore some properties later, but that is another cycle that is discovered. We're going to keep backtracking up, and I will do this relatively quickly. So we backtrack all the way up, and then all of the nodes will finalize as being red. So this actually helps us do cycle identification. And there's a bunch of nice properties about this, which we will discuss in a future video about how do these discovery and finishing times help us out. One thing that you can do if you don't have colors available is you can separate these times by a comma to make them more easily distinguishable. Here I can easily distinguish them because they're different colors. Maybe if you're colorblind, I apologize for that being unclear. I'm not sure how difficult they are to distinguish. So those are our discovery and finishing times, discovery time being in blue, finishing time being in red. So this is an example of how depth first search works. You can often do this a little bit quicker than I did here by sort of cutting out some of the steps that are algorithmic that aren't necessarily required to be done by hand. But this is sort of how the algorithm would walk through this problem.